it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. I figured I might as well get the Scrapping Burlesque kit uh, unboxed <laughs> before the new one arrives. And um, when I was unboxing it, I did not hit record. So here we are unboxing our unboxing. I, I don't know. I had everything laid out and I just was flipping through it all so that you could see what comes in the kit. Each little kit that comes in this kit has six pieces of paper, a stamp set, some kind of embellishment, and an envelope. I get the banana split level, so I also get some additional items. In this kit, it was a die, a stamp set, a distress ink, and I think that was it. Um, and then you always get cardstock, and my camera does not like the glitter paper, but we got two sheets of glitter cardstock, a silver and a gold, and they were self-adhesive, and I am a huge fan of that. So this was just a piece of 80-pound Nina White cardstock, Nina Solar White cardstock, and I cut it into quarters. Um, because I like to work with a smaller size, they fit in my Misty, and that way I had three additional pieces ready to go. So here I wanted to stamp that chameleon kind of in rows, and I was going to do it in my Misty, and... Um, realized that that probably wasn't going to be the best solution here. So I just grabbed the little squishy mat out of there and hand stamped him using the Versamark ink. And then I heat embossed using white embossing powder. You can kind of see the chameleons disappear. That's because that embossing powder is melting. And it's always fun. It's more fun with like metallic embossing powders. They get so pretty. But I was just cleaning up my mess there. And I use that misty, squishy matte thing all the time. <laughs> so here I had pulled out some Distress inks in rainbow colors. My inks are well loved. My ink blending tools are well used. I don't think I've replaced them since I've gotten them. And um, I know I didn't get the Distress inks right away, but I've definitely had them at least four years. I yeah probably four years or so so they they use quite a bit I chose the distress ink here instead of oxides because they are really bright and bold and like a clean looking color um, the oxides to me look chalky and uh, milky kind of now on top of stamping and embossing and ink blending I also stamped him on this polka dot paper and I'm gonna fussy cut him out and I did all of my die cutting off screen there. You can see it up in the corner. I um, wanted to make sure that I had everything straight. So it was easier to stamp on the bigger panel and then die cut. Now this chameleon, the way he is stamped, he looks like he has a pupil. And um, it is the pattern paper. So I just covered up the actual like blinky eye from the stamp and left the pupil there and then uh, darkened it with a gel pen. So this sentiment says you're one in a chameleon and I just lined that up on my block using my grid mat underneath and the grid lines on the block. Stamped that in VersaFine ink on this aqua colored cardstock that came in the kit. And then I popped up this panel with some foam tape. Oh, I adhered him first and that one <laughs> chameleon wasn't heat embossed all the way. So that's where he ended up. He's just supposed to look different. Everybody else is blending in and he is not. So he is definitely one in a chameleon or one in a million. <laughs> so I finished putting all that foam tape on there and I made sure that it was made, made, made sure that it was completely covered. I didn't want this to warp or uh, get squished in the mail when someone sends this out. This is the reason I use liquid adhesive. It makes things easier for repositioning. And then I just adhered this to a piece of black cardstock from my stash to give it a thin black border. And when I had peeled that up, I had mm, kind of peeled the paper up a little bit and I didn't want to start over. So I pulled out one of the sequin mix mixes from the kit. My words are hard today. <laughs> and I strategically placed them so that no one but you would know that I had the little tear. I'm not going to tell you which one it's under, but it's under one of them. <laughs> and I sometimes have trouble with that pick-me-up stick. What is that thing called? The jewel picker? Yeah, jewel picker. 
what are you using? Are you using the really expensive uh, katana? Do you, do you find that that's really worth it? So this piece of cardstock here, I wanted to make sure that I would be able to get this circle die cut out of it. So I did put my chameleon and his little branch way over on the edge. Wanted to try to, you know, keep it down to one piece of paper for a card, per card. So I pulled out some markers here that you traditionally would not blend together. They are green, yellow, orange, and a dark blue. And I started with the YG25, I think, and then the Y17, the YR17, and then the B37. And I did get my favorite YG17 out. But here I was kind of Kathy vacuusing the colors, kind of smashing them together. As long as the numbers kind of coordinate, like 37 and 17, both end in 7, um, the colors blend nice together. And the 25, the 5 is not that far from 7, so it, blend, it blended really nice. And I picked those colors because I wanted to do kind of a um, night sky sunset kind of deal in the background, and I wanted him to match. And in the end, it does match like perfectly. So here I used mold lawn, carved pumpkin, and I think scattered straw to ink blend on this circle of Nina. It was just a die cut from the other corner of that piece of paper. And I really made sure that this paper was saturated so that these blended really, really well. No like uh, water splatters or anything. I just wanted the beautiful ink blending. And I cut tiny little pieces of this super sticky foam tape for this branch. It was worth it. I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> so I put foam tape on the top of the chameleon too. And then I added a couple little drops of liquid glue and adhered him to the branch. And then I added foam tape um, to the places that it wasn't. So that he didn't, you know, he stayed nice and level. And added him to the circle. See how nicely he blends? It's just ridiculous. Then I used this Spellbinders um, embossing folder to emboss that background. And I didn't want that branch to look empty. So I did take the solid leaf stamp that was in the stamp set and stamped a few to give the illusion that he's in a full green tree. I used that Lawn Fawn ink. I don't have many colored inks, but... I have that one. And then I took some strips of pattern paper that were left over from the previous card that I made. It's like the front and the back of that paper. And then um, lined up the sentiment again. I wanted to stamp that on another little banner. It also says you're wanting a chameleon. That little exclamation point is going to get lost. It is so tiny that I keep trying to make sure I put that back, but I'm going to lose it. I know I am. <laughs> so I use the Simon Says Stamp label, banner, die, to, I don't even know what these are called, to cut out the pattern papers. I just like the compressed die cut edge sometimes. And this allows me to kind of line up the patterns so that I can pick exactly what I want. And then I just gave them a um, little banner edge here, and I laid them out just to see how things were going to go, or how I wanted them to go. And, you know, when you traditionally cut the fishtail banner, one goes one way and one goes the other. So I kind of created the illusion of that with these banners, with the two pattern papers anyway, and then put the other one up on top. Added foam tape to pop him up. He'll be at the same level as the actual chameleon. I try to keep foam tape to one layer on my cards. I don't want anybody to have to pay additional postage to send a card. So I put it on black. And I had cut out that black circle from the background just to conserve on paper. And I used more sequins from the kit to add shimmer and shine to this cute little chameleon card. So that is card number two. Oh, no, I did add a white gel pen to him. And uh, after he's done, he looks, he's my favorite out of all of these. And I like them all. 
So here is that third piece of Nina, and I have this idea to stamp three of these in a row. And this is, uh, you were born to stand out. Oh, no, I actually pulled out my phone and looked up what cartoon meerkats look like. And it was super helpful if you are ever stuck on what to color something. That is a really good way to do it. Most of the stamps that I use as a paper crafter card maker are kind of in the cartoon realm. So looking up cartoon images is a good place to start. So I thought these colors were pretty close to what I was seeing on my phone. And I think he turned out super adorable. Gave him some pink cheeks. And oh, I was checking to see what color his nose should be. <laughs> so I wanted to give him kind of the illusion of a Copic colored scene. I don't know if you've ever seen Antonia from Tappleberry Lane. She has this super free, sketchy style about her coloring. She can lay in a background like nobody else. And I know there's some big names on YouTube, but I highly recommend checking her out. I'll see if I can figure out how to link her in my description box. So you can just directly go check her out. because She's really worth it. And here I was just adding in just a little bit of ground for him to be standing on. I didn't draw anything fancy in the background and it looks like he's standing in some grass. At least I think so. And I made sure I filled in the bottom just a little bit more so I didn't have any white space. And then I used this cross stitched square die to cut him out. And I also needed this little banner so I cut that out of there. And then I had used that same cross stitch banner to or cross stitch square to die cut brown cardstock. And in the end, I realized I needed the next size up. So instead of wasting cardstock, I just cut it out of the next size up and put that original one back in the square. And I got lots of extra texture and interest. And I was trying to see if I had something else I wanted to add to this card. I started putting it together. Um, sometimes, and sometimes I have no idea what the card is going to end up like. <laughs> I always try to start with a plan, but sometimes that's not how things work out. This one, I believe, I had sketched out in my little sketchbook um, for this particular scene. And here I decided to cut another little banner and stamp merely another birthday on it and put this down in the corner. I did trim it off and I used my ruler, I think, to draw a line and then trim it off. Yeah, and then just put it down at the bottom. I thought it was kind of neat. It would be great for an office. It kind of resembles like the tabs on office folders. So I think that would be a great place. But my stepson, he absolutely loves meerkats. I need to make him a meerkat card because <laughs> it's like his favorite animal in the history of ever. So I did add a little bit of blue to his eyes and then made sure I blended it out with the Copic Colorless Blender. So here is card number four. And I have a piece of that Nina cardstock in my Misty, and I am stamping a row of three little meerkats. These guys are so cute. Grepping for Less did a really good job picking their stamp sets this month and designing the ones that they designed. This, the stamps were just adorable and beautiful and perfect. I'm guessing I was answering a question for a small person. There are several that run around this house. I finished up my stamping, but it took forever. <laughs> finished up my stamping, which was the three little meerkats, and then I wanted to stamp him on this like honeycomb paper. And I just used a stamp block and I stamped him 
in the Misty, but not using the Misty. I just wanted that squishy mat. When I stamp with a block, I like having something underneath. It makes my images turn out much nicer. So here I just colored these uh, meerkats the same way. I only colored the two on the outside on this piece. Um, I colored them the same way I did the first one based on the cartoon pictures. And I think uh, it was just, they were cute. They turned out cute. So they must have been the right colors. I liked the uh, combinations of browns because they were different families of earth tones. The 30s, the 50s, well, I don't even remember the 20s. There was just all sorts of them. I used the hex chart definitely to pull my colors. And this 15 adds a lot of red to the undertone of the meerkat which I guess would resemble the dirt in the desert where he lives. I think it's kind of reddish. I don't know. I've never been there. I'm guessing. But there, I was just finishing up those two meerkats, and they turned out so cute. And then I pulled out the patterned paper meerkat, and I colored him the exact same way on the, colored paper, or on the patterned paper. So the reason I did this is because you can see patterns through the Copic markers. Copic markers are not opaque, they are transparent. And that's one of the things about them that a lot of people like because you can layer colors and they blend nicely. But they also color over pattern paper in a most beautiful way. They allow the pattern paper to still show and you get to see all of the shading. So his pattern isn't like screaming, I am a crazy pattern, like if I had stamped him on that orange on the background or on the back of that paper, but he's got this really cool pattern on him. So in my mind, he would still be able to stand up in the tall grass and say, hey, the bad guy's coming, but he would stand out because he looks a little different. Now, stamping on pattern paper, you don't get to keep the whites of the eyes. So I did use my white pen to do that, and then I didn't wait long enough and um, had to go back and fix the black because I didn't wait for the white to dry, and it was it was a bunch of mistakes, but it did turn out fine in the end. So I chose to stamp the You Were Born to Stand Out in um, black ink, and then I did heat emboss it so that it did come right off that pattern paper, which is the same pattern paper I stamped the little critter on. And I popped up, see there I am fixing it, I popped up this panel using some super sticky Amazon foam tape, added a little bit of clear or liquid adhesive, and that was card four. Here is card five. I am rounding the corners with a Creative Memories corner rounder. I, I've had that a very long time. I'm going to say 20 years probably. I got it at a home party. My mom bought it for me, and uh, I was a new mom to my oldest son. He's 21, so I would say 20 years. So this is about um, mixing pattern papers. Now, Scrapping for Less does a great job when they put these little kits together, but the papers in each kit do mostly essentially coordinate. You, you can just throw any of them together, but what looks nicest is if you um, are careful with your pattern choice. You know, a bold pattern, um, one that looks like it could be a solid pattern, and a smaller print usually do a really good job, and that's kind of what I have here. Uh, and then I'm coloring this sloth, and I did look him up too. I wanted to see what they looked like because I have no idea. I don't remember the last time I've seen a sloth. So they're brown and grayish, and their face has more gray around the eyes than, than brown. At least that's the image that I found. So that's how I colored him, and he looks so squishy and adorable and slow. And after I colored him, I thought, you know, I probably could have put some moss on his back because I think they go so slow that they have moss that grow on them. And then I didn't want him just hanging out in this white circle, so I did mask him off and add a little bit of green uh, with the ink blender. I didn't add any ink to it, but a little bit of green on there. 
and you can see it in real life. It, it'll show at the picture on the picture at the end. So then I just matted him on this chocolate brown cardstock, and then I layered all my pieces together. There is my almost solid, my busy pattern, and my big pattern, and they will come together. And it, you don't need to put anything between them. Um, Christy with Christy Gets Crafty. She has a lot of videos on her channel on how to mix and match patterns. She definitely can teach, teach you anything you want to know about mixing patterns. And that's probably the resource that, that if I was going to send you to go look at, that would be it, is her channel. I think she just hit 20,000 subscribers. And... Um, She's she's good at what she does. So here I just cut some banner ends in a few of these scraps. I guess I'm using four patterns here. Oh, I must not have liked the original banner and cut it off. Sometimes I do that. Like I cut in a little too far, and then I didn't don't like how it is. So that other brown with the giant polka dots on it. Um, that works because it's got mostly brown and it's such a big pattern. So the Thanks a Sloth is the sentiment on here. And I stamped that over to the one side so that the uh, circle, the image circle, can fit on the other. And then I popped it up with foam tape and put him over there. He's just so sweet. Put him, put him on the brown cardstock. And that was card number five. For card number six, I am using the sloth again. And I, I'm using the other sloth image that's in the kit or in the stamp set. Stamping him on some white, Nina white cardstock with a Copic friendly ink because I am again going to Copic color him. And I'm going to end up fussy cutting him, so that's why this little tiny scrap of paper was fine using the same colors for the sloth that I colored the last one, um, the E70 family, and then I used, I think, warm gray to do the face and then, you know, warmed it up with this very cool toned brown. It's not very warm at all. But he turned out so cute. I just want to squish him. Yep, W's. These images are just so stinking cute. I don't know if I would be able to choose if I was putting kits together. I There's so much on the market. So many tiny little sets. So many options. So many embellishments. So much stuff. I have no idea how they do it. But they they win every month. I absolutely love it. So here I was using my Tombow marker just to go around the edges. I didn't want him to have any white edges um, when I put him on his background which is going to be this pretty aqua cardstock and I used this Darice embossing folder to emboss clouds in the background. I heat embossed the thanks a sloth and I adhered him down at the bottom. I was trying to decide what I wanted as the background. I just wasn't sure what cardstock would go with it best, but I chose this zigzaggy chevron pattern and this brown chocolate brown cardstock. Look at how sweet the back of it is. I probably, if I would have thought about it enough, I probably just wouldn't have been able to cut it. The papers are so cute. And again, more foam tape to pop this image up. I always use enough so that it isn't going to sag. Probably should invest in some like fun foam or something, but I, this is fine. And then here I'm using the same sequin mix I used to cover up the mistake with the chameleon on here because I think it came with this little set. It has like the cream and the blue. So I just put a few of those around to add some shine. I love those big sequins. A lot of times I actually trim off the edge so I can tuck them under things just a little bit more. 
So if you're ever having trouble and you want to tuck things under, you can always trim the edge. So that was card six. So cards seven and eight, I actually kind of worked through at the same time. Now here I stamped all the images for cards seven and eight. This bird stamp is so pretty. I, I'm not sure what kind of a parrot he is, but he's a parrot. I have a friend that has a peach, I don't even know what it is, cockatoo? I think it's a cockatoo. Her name is Peaches, and I kind of want to color this like peaches, but I didn't for this card. I'll have to do that in the future. So I wanted to stamp this other image here a second time so that I could do some like layered three well layered imaging mm, I don't even know what I would call it um but anyway <laughs> I colored this little parrot here kind of uh well when you see storybook parrots this is kind of the traditional coloring the red the very primary colors I've never really seen a parrot in real life except maybe in a zoo so I don't even really know I mean I seen a green one once because I used to have one but he wasn't very pretty and I seen a gray one and he wasn't very pretty peaches is pretty though but she's not a this bird she's kind of like this anyway <laughs> I digress so I did some copic coloring here with some three and four color blends just to make the bird really pretty and bright and there's my B30s they are it's a really pretty blue and then I used an aqua color I don't know if these birds have aqua on them but this one does and I think he likes it too it looks like he's strutting his stuff And then I just pulled my yellows back out for his feet because apparently I forgot he had feet. And you're going to see me screw up more than once when I'm coloring this here. But I wanted to color the wings on this bird. And I wanted to color the rest of the bird on this bird, on the other bird. But I took the like lightest color from each color combination and colored in the other bird or the mid-tone or whatever it was um, so that I was laying out the colors but I really was concentrating on the shading and everything on this bird here that I'm coloring now. I wanted to make sure that it was blended nicely and looked perfect and I was basically just laying down color on the other one. And I made sure that it was darker, like where the feathers would lay over each other, and lighter where this, I thought the light would hit him. So here is mistake number one. I start coloring this part of this bird. And I am shading. I am going to town, making sure it is perfect. And I'm not sure how far I get before I realize that, oops, that was the wrong bird. <laughs> so I flipped him around and I started coloring this bird because I need to color the rest of the bird on this bird. <laughs> you just get mindlessly coloring. I could have just kept coloring all the things, but I didn't. Now I pulled in some greens for him um, as far as color combinations. The other bird did not have green and this one did. And I did pull out that G28. I don't know if it's the 28 or 29. They're almost exactly the same color. I think it's the 28 to get that dimension. And then I did do the aqua tail on him. Like I said, I made sure I got the shading in there on this. Well, bits and pieces on both birds <laughs> and then I did the branch here now this branch isn't long enough for what I want to do but I will fix that a little bit later so I did fussy cut the wings off of this bird 
which is kind of the shape of a heart. So if you were looking for a cool heart, you could just stamp that and, I don't know, maybe you have a burn lover in your life. And then I just fussy cut everything else out. When I cut out the Mr. Strutting Bird, I actually tore his little toe off, and I will go back and fix that later too. But here I was cutting my pattern paper so that I could finish putting together card number seven. And I pulled out that blue and gold like Moroccan pattern. I don't end up using that, I don't think. So off screen I die cut that circle. Those those are Nellie's dies. If you ever come across Nellie dies, Nellie's dies, get them. They're super inexpensive. I think it's a small business. I've had these forever. Um, and they're purple. And they're super nested and I uh, I really love them. Um, so here, like I said, that branch was not long enough, so I cut it and then just added a little more space behind the bird. And I added a little bit of ink blending and put him down. And then I added foam tape to the wings. This is like a super old, people used to do this all the time. I don't remember exactly what the, the sheets are that you can get where you can pop all the things. Maybe it's decoupage. No, that's not it. Um, but it used to be a, like a thing. You did that to everything you layered it and you know layered it and layered it and layered it but um, I thought the wings were perfect for that and then I used that blue and gold stripe there and I thought that white space was perfect for my sentiment which just says hello gorgeous and because these are slick papers you it's hard to just stamp on them it the ink does not dry well so I did heat emboss them with clear he embossed with them. He embossed the sentiment with clear um, so that I didn't have any smudging or smearing. And then I placed my beautiful bird on this paper. Look at that paper. It's like watercolored flowers. I don't know. It's just stunning. Like I said, Scrapping for Less does this paper thing right. They definitely, um, they definitely do a good job. I did use my black glaze pen there for the eyeball. So this is the final card, card number eight. And uh, I must have been counting for measuring. Um, I wanted to do this split card thing. I don't know. It looks like four rectangles, but I figured I didn't need four rectangles. I only needed two, and I could use a, like a belly band kind of to... Um, make it look like there are four. So I was trying to decide what color cardstock I wanted to build my card on. Oh, and this here, what I did was I taped my piece back together and then adhered that little belly band and then used my scissors to cut it part because I wanted um, it to be exactly straight and I if you've seen some of my other videos you'll see that I struggle with making things straight so I figured even if it wasn't perfect it would be lined up once I got it all put together and then I used a love from Lizzie um, black I think peel off and then here I'm using some gold too to bring in the gold I like these um, peel-offs. They sometimes they add exactly what you need. They're just like long, skinny stickers. I don't know. She's brilliant coming up with that. I don't I actually don't even know if she came up with it, but that's where I got them from. So I colored, uh, cut, colored. 
I did ink blend on this um, oval, and I think those are Spellbinders dies. They are really, really old too. I try not to rebuy stuff, um, dies and stuff. And then there's this little toe. I was piecing it back on. I felt bad. I tore his toe off. <laughs> um, and I also die cut the glitter paper, the gold glitter paper, with the scalloped rect rectangle. Oh my gosh, scalloped oval that is bigger than well, the one that I used. Um, and then I adhered down my panels to this red cardstock. And I made sure that the, <laughs> the Love from Lizzie peel-offs that didn't go all the way were in the center. So that once I put him on there, you wouldn't know. So there I... Um, stuck him down and that was that self-adhesive glitter paper uh totally thinking that's awesome and then uh the sentiment here says happy bird day and i stamped that with my versafine onyx black ink and i believe that is all eight cards here they are on my super messy desk and here they are in a beautiful group shot and you'll see each one here for uh, additional details I'd love to know what your favorite card was I'm sorry it took me so long to get this video up and edited but um, we had lots of technical issues on our end but I did make eight very sweet cards with this kit they it these kits are definitely worth it. I have so much left over. I have every single stamp set left over that I will use over and over again. These craft supplies know that once they come into my office, they will never leave. <laughs> so on your screen, you will see an additional video if you'd like to keep watching. And I appreciate you stopping by.